So I have edge of pavements, but clearly I don't want this edge of pavement running to the center line there. I want to put in some curb returns. So how do I do that? Under geometry, horizontal, arcs. I'm going to go to arc between elements, simple arc. And all it wants is a radius. I'm going to do 25 foot radiuses here. Uh, making sure it is going to use the active feature, which is edge of pavement. What's the first element? I'm going to click that. What's the second element? That one. Okay. Where is your curve? Okay. Also, what's your radius? So I'm being prompted by for both the uh, a sector and a radius. So I am going to type in 25, 25, hit enter. There we go. And I want it to be here. And now I'm being prompted for which, uh, how to trim this out. And I'm going to use my down arrow, my down key, or a Shrek TM says down key. So down key both. There we go. And it prompted it truncates it out. Now you're thinking, uh-oh, I lost my edge of pavement. I actually didn't. I'm okay. I'm going to hit here. It still exists. Same thing, data point, uh, data point for both. Everything's back. Everything's good. Okay, so a little explanation. Um, we thought this went away, but it's still there. So what is this stuff underneath the hood here? Um, everything's based on relationships. And um, we don't want to have things disappear because things are based on these, these, this area um, that apparently is invisible. These are called gaps and intervals. And I'm going to click on this. And you can see if I click on it first, and this has kind of changed in uh, ORD Update 2. People wanted to be able to grab these and get lengths of the, uh, the tangent. So that's why you know, the interface has changed a bit. Um, but that is an, uh, an interval, and there's a gap here. If I do a right-click, that gives me the, the whole enchilada there. So again, I'm going to click on it, and that's showing me one of the elements, the, uh, the, the interval of the element. Notice that my offset is grayed out. If I do a right-click, I get the whole thing, including the gap, and I can change my offsets here. I'm going to do that. I'm going to say minus 36 because it's to the left. It was drawn from bottom to top. So left is to the west there. Uh, notice I, my relationships work. My fillet is still tangent to the edge of pavement. Okay. And um, I'm going to undo back there. Uh, there is a, right now in this beta software, uh, there is a, there is a uh, undos take a few steps, a few undos to get the uh, actual thing. So that is beta that will be cleaned up. Okay, I want to go for, I'm going to have a 12 foot turn lane at this uh, intersection and I'm going to drop it down to, uh, I'm going to end that taper right about there. It's like 120 feet below before the intersection center line. Okay, so I'm going to go to offsets and tapers. Uh, ratio is not important to me now. The the dropping of a 12 foot lane is important. So my off my offsets are critical rather than the ratio. Okay, so I'm going to follow my prompts. It says locate the element to, essentially to offset from. I want to offset from this edge of pavement. Now starting, I want my offset to be zero. Okay, it's actually ending, but I'm going to go uh, zero. And it's asking me for two things here. That's not really clear uh, unless you know that those little blue arrows to the right of that heads up display is indicating that there's more stuff there. There is more stuff there. Okay. It wants to know two things. It wants to know the offset, and I'm right, I'm hitting the arrow, uh, and it wants to know the starting distance. That is the distance along that element. You can see down there it's zero and it moves upstream. I don't want to type in a number. I want a relationship to exist. So I'm going to snap to that end taper. Okay. And now it's asking me for something else. It's asking me for the end offset, a distance. Again, that's the distance along that element, or the length. Okay. I want the length to be 100, so I'm going to type in 100 and hit enter, and that locks it. Okay. And I also want uh, end distance to be, the end offset to be 12. Okay. So it's pretty much locked in there. I can change directions, but right there, I'm going to hit a data point. Okay. Do not want to mirror that. Okay. And before I move forward, I want to make sure it's correct. Tapers, tapers, you, you definitely want to make sure it's doing it the way you expect it. And there's a couple different options in there. A lot of it's asking you a couple things for each data point, so you definitely want to check. 
All right, so it looks like it's 100 feet long. I can change that. Uh, looks like the glyph saying key point lock is good. So if I change this distance, I expect that, yes, it follows. Okay, so if I say, hey, you know what, I really want 140 feet before the, the turn there so that the cars have stopped merging and they're they're not looking at the car merging on the right. They're ready. They're looking at the car ahead of them about to turn left. Okay, so that's how that works. Um, let's do a... Um, we'll do this edge of pavement next. All right, we've seen the offset entire distance. It's a single offset, entire distance. Okay, it does the entire uh, dist length of the, the source, the reference element. We don't want that. We want just partial. Okay, and we're going to do, it's a single offset, constant offset, partial. And it's going to prompt, it the dialog is a little more complex because it has start distance, uh, start position, that sort of thing. I'm going to go entirely from the heads up prompt. It says, what do you want to offset? I want to say, uh, and it could be any of these things. Okay, where do you want to start? And I can lock it. I can hit alt, where it says alt, lock to start. So I can say lock to start. Okay, uh, what's my distance. There it is. Okay. I did not key in and I go there. Okay. I did not key in an offset. So it was a 30 foot offset, but I didn't key that in. Why? Because I want the relationship. Wow. Just like school all over again. I'm looking for a relationship, not just some mindless key in. Okay. So you can see that I clicked on that. You see the link there's a relationship there, it's a key point. So if this changes, in fact, let's call my bluff here. If I say this is now a 40 foot offset, ah, look at that. See, notice how it maintains the relationship. If I had keyed in 30 here initially, it would, it would maintain the 30 foot offset. We don't want that. We want that edge of pavement to tie in to the, to the taper. Okay. So this is a case where the design intent is we are having the taper with control where the offset is. Okay. There's other ways to do it, but this is how we did it. One last thing, let's trim this up. We don't need this edge of pavement here anymore because this is the edge of pavement. This would be a lane, but let's just use plain old editing tools. Say, so have that, trim there. Okay, and there we go. All right, I'm going to experiment with some uh, geometry here so I'm going to set a mark so I can undo to that so I just want to verify that my design intent does in fact work uh, let's just make this 60 bad design but you can see that this still maintains a hundred okay, if I want that distance to be instead of a hundred make it 100, 150 okay. and if uh, I want that offset to be 18. Instead of 18, I want it to be 50, 60, something dramatic. All right, you can see how all that stuff remains um, connected. The relationships are all maintained. As your engineering changes, you don't have to redo the drafting. Unless you like that sort of thing, which I do not. Let's see, make that 18. And finally, I have no idea what I just did, so I'm going to undo back to my uh, previous good scenario. So the engineering constraints on this side run from the intersection, a distance, a taper length, and then this is controlled by the uh, the taper offset at the end. We're going to do the other side in a different way. We're going to use same tools, different constraints. Um, we're going to do, actually we'll do a ratio uh, based uh, taper, but I'm going to do a single offset partial and we're going to offset from this. We're going to go 30 feet, minus 30 since it's on the uh, left side, minus 30. I'm going to hit enter to lock it and that locks it over there. Uh, where am I going to start? I will start at the beginning. And the next thing is how long do we go? Now we're going to go, I think, 180 feet. Yes. So the end distance, or I can go length. Again, I'm using the left or right arrows. The length will be 180. 
enter data point to accept it. No mirror. Okay, this time we're going to taper over to the uh, from the two lanes to the one lane. This is a turn lane. I'm going to go to, we're going to do a ratio this time. So we did a variable offset on the other side. This time the ratio will be the key. Okay. We're going to do a one to five ratio on that. Uh, so what we're going to do is we're going to start here and we're going to curve in. So I'm going to follow the prompts. It says locate element. So I'll offset from, from here. Where's my starting point? I'm going to snap. I'm not going to key in anything because I don't want hard copy numbers, which are arbitrary. I want relationships, which are snaps. So I'm going to say start here. And now I want the ratio. What is the ratio? One to five. Um, if you're in the proper areas of the world where you are driving on the right, this is a add lane, so it can be a very uh, fast ratio. Okay, so you can see it's either, I'm gonna drop it like that. Just draw it in there. Do not mirror. And then finally, I'm just gonna do the drawing product, excuse me, drawing, and I'm gonna go to the Trimmed intersection tool, and say click here, click there, and there is my added lane for the turn. There's my ratio of 1 to 5. There you go, right there. I can change that if I wanted to. Let's go to 10. 1 colon 10. There you go. So notice how the ratio, if I move things around, The design intent is maintained. The intent here is to have the ratio be the uh, guiding factor, not the uh, length. All right, this is a ramp edge of pavement. It's not the center line. It's actually the baseline, but the baseline is along the edge of pavement. Here's another edge of pavement, so I can't just have that vertex there. I have to have an arc in there. So if I go to geometry, arc, simple arc, we've done this before up at the uh, the intersection to the north, simple arc, and I'm going to go first, second, I want it to be 50 feet, so I'll type in 50. Uh, this isn't a reference file, I think, so it won't trim out, but I will say that was my back, that was my ahead, so I want the ahead. I'll hit the down key, down key! Uh, there we go. All right, so that's, uh, that's simple. We've done that already. And we can see if our heads up display, we can change it. If I look over at uh, my properties, here is my 50 foot radius. Everything's straightforward. So let's do a complex, instead of a simple arc, let's do a complex. Uh, let's do a three center arc. So we'll go arc between elements, three center arc. And I am going to, what's our initial radius? Um, you can do this from the heads up display, but when there's always, when there's a ton of stuff, I prefer to put in the dialog first. So we'll do with a 75. We're not looping. We're going to do a uh, curve with a length of 125, excuse me, a radius of 125, a length of 50. We'll do the same thing on the back end there, or the head. 125 and 50, and it's going to prompt. It's going to ask for confirmation through all that. So I'm going to say, click here. Second element's that one. Uh, n notice the heads-up display. <laughs> you get so much information just from a, a glance. I, I love it. Okay. Didn't prompt me because those were locked in there. So let's. Uh, I'm done. Let's take a look. So here's my simple. Here's my complex. It's all editable on the fly, on the heads-up display. And looking at the properties of that arc, you can see that it consists of three different things. Okay. And if I go down to the... Okay, everything is editable here in the element properties. So hopefully adding some credibility to my uh, stance that my favorite tool is properties. Let's go ahead and change this simple to a, a spiral arc spiral. So through the properties dialog. So I want my back 
transition to be spiral and the length will be 35 immediately updates and let's do the head transition spiral 35 there we go heads up display I can change it here you know it's a, it's a lovely interface all right cul-de-sacs how do we do cul-de-sacs or as Tolkien says bags end uh, we go to arcs we do a circle we want a 35 foot radius so I will say radius value I can do that from the heads up display but I'm doing it here 35 okay. place center point there we go data point to accept and then let's do arc between points simple arc between elements I'm sorry this will be a 20 foot so I'll say click here click there 20 foot fillet data point uh, down key to both data point data point data point data point if you found this video helpful please give it a like if you want to see more such series consider subscribing to our channel thank you and see you next time